first of all thanks for being here in my youtube channel so friends if you are a regular follower of my channel so do not forget to purchase my book quantitative aptitude book and start solving all the question what i have given in this book right because each and every question it's an art level question nowadays our competitive exam level or keep on increasing so practice all the questions what i have given inside this book if you have any doubt on purchasing it do not forget to watch this video in the unboxing video, I have told you what all the topics are there and where to buy this book, everything. So if you are a regular follower of Feel Free to Learn, do not forget to purchase this book on our platform. So now let me move on to the video. So friends, now let me move on to lesson number one that is on the geometry topic, questions that is based on rhombus, right? So before learning a rhombus, so first understand that inside a geometry, we have many categories of question triangle circle parallelogram rhombus pyramid but you have to learn the geometry topic because geometry is the vast syllabus if you are preparing for railway ssc campus or your state level competitive exams always remember that first geometry you have to learn the triangle and then second geometry you have to learn the circles and then only you have to go with rhombus parallelogram pyramid etc why because if you take geometry, 90% of the concept will be on Pythagoras theorem. So applying a Pythagoras theorem to find some of the answers. So only first geometry, you have to learn triangle. So in our YouTube channel, I have posted 12 videos starting from lesson number one till all the different kinds of model on the topic triangle. So first learn geometry triangle and then come and learn geometry circle. What is called as quad, what is called as tangent, how we apply the Pythagoras theorem inside a circle to find the radius length of the chord or length of the tangent everything so learn that and then come and watch this rhombus video right because if you learn step by step process definitely you can feel the geometry topic will be very easy even though it's a vast syllabus for the competitive exams but if you learn it in a step by step process definitely this topic will be easy so friends now in this video we are going to learn some of the important properties of a rhombus because a rhombus and a square looks exactly same but there will be some small difference here but we have to understand what is the difference between square and a rhombus and what are all the important properties are there for a rhombus and rhombus we have three formula one is the area formula and second is the perimeter formula and the third is the diagonal based remaining finding the remaining values so that formula alone if you search it in a google they, they will use a different formula to solve each and every teacher will solve a different different uh, formulas to find that diagonal one diagonal two value so you learn only one formula and make small changes in that formula to apply to solve the question in an easy way so I will teach you where to apply that formula and in which question if you apply the same formula in a different way, you will get the answer easily. So you don't want to learn many formulas, learn only one formula, try to change that formula into a different different format and based upon the question you can apply that formula so that that will be easy and you can solve the question fastly. Right? So friends, in this video, we are going to completely learn the property of rhombus, an important formula. And in the next video, we will be solving some of the important question that is based on a rhombus. So now let me move on to the basics property of a rhombus. Okay, friends, now let me move on to the basic property of a rhombus, right? So every time before learning a rhombus, first understand what is the major difference between square and a rhombus. Because square and a rhombus, when you look at most of the diagram, it looks similar. But understand that if it is a square, right, it's a square and this is a rhombus. So if it is a square, all the sides are same, yes? The length, all the side length will be equal. Similarly, in rhombus also, all the side length are equal. But the only difference between square and a rhombus is, in a square, we have all these angles 90 degree. Exactly 90 degree. Then only we can say it's a square. If the angles are at not at 90 degree, then it is called as a rhombus. 
right if all the four angles are 90 degree then it is a square if all the four angles are not 90 degree then it is a rhombus that is the major difference because perimeter of a square is 4a rhombus of a, a perimeter of a rhombus is also a 4a because all the sides are equal but the only difference is based on an angle if all the four angles are 90 degree then it is called as a square if all the four angles are not a 90 degree then it is called as a rhombus right so now let me move on to the first let, let's learn the difference between square and a rhombus right so now we can learn some of the important properties here the first property all the sides are equal just now i have told you right all the sides of the rhombus will be equal point number two opposite sides are parallel for example we have four sides here when you take ad one side this side will be parallel to cb similarly dc is one side and this side is parallel to ab so when's understood or not so all the side opposite sides are parallel so this side and this side will be parallel and this side and this side will be parallel so that is the point number two point number three opposite angles are equal so very important property here right because if it is a rhombus right we have four angles in this four angles always the opposite angles will be equal for example if you take this complete angle is 40 degree then opposite angle of c will be a so this angle total will be 40 degree so similarly if angle d is 60 degree then angle b will also be 60 degree so opposite angles so these are called as opposite so opposite angle in a rhombus will be equal so that is the point number three Point number four, diagonal bisects each other. So you know what is called as a diagonal, right? From this point, if I draw a line to an, another vertices, which is called as a diagonal. So here in a rhombus, we can draw two diagonals. So let's assume that this is diagonal one and this will be diagonal two, right? So here in a rhombus, we have two diagonals, but both the diagonal, while drawing a diagonal lines, you can see both the diagonal bisects each other. That means it crosses each other. Right? It overtakes or what, what to say, it, it overlaps, right? So which is called as a diagonal bisects each other. So the bisects points will be at this point where the diagonal bisects each other. So which is fourth point. And the fifth point where the diagonals are perpendicular, yes or no? Because we have drawn one diagonal like this and one diagonal horizontally and vertically. So we can say that the diagonals are perpendicular. And the last point, sum of the interior angle is 360 degree, which is most important point. So sum of interior angle is 360 degree. So friends, listen here. We know that in a rhombus, we know opposite angles are equal. But there is an another angle inside the rhombus because we have the diagonal bisect point here. So just look at this carefully. So this point is called as a 90 degree. And similarly, this angle will be another 90 degree. And this angle will be another 90 degree. And this angle will be another 90 degree. So each one of these part is a right angle triangle. Because if one angle is 90 degree, then it is a right angle triangle, right? So just listen carefully. So this angle is 90 degree this angle is 90 degree and this is 90 and this is 90 when you add all these four angle 90 degree into 4 resultant will be 360 degree that's the reason they are saying sum of interior angle is 360 degree so friends understood or not most important point why because you have to remember one thing if it is a rhombus its rhombus is made up of four right angle triangles see this is one right angle triangle this will be another right angle triangle and this will be another right angle triangle and this will be another right angle triangle so if we join all these four right angle triangle then it comes as a rhombus right so important point and if you add sum of all the four interior angle which is equals to 360 degree right so there are some important properties are also there in a rhombus other than this but while solving a question i will tell you how to apply that property there because without knowing a number you, you will feel confused if you learn initially all those properties but remember that these are the important properties are for the rhombus so first thing is all the sides are equal 
and second is the sides opposite sides are parallel and the diagonals are perpendicular sides are parallel diagonals are perpendicular and then opposite angles are always equal and then the most important point sum of the interior angle or internal angle that point diagonal point the diagonal bisect point at right? this point where we can say that sum is equals to 360 degree right so that's it these are the important properties of a rhombus so now let me move on to the three important formulas in the topic a rhombus so friends now let me move on to the three important formulas that we have in the topic a rhombus right very simple formulas so first will be the area of a rhombus so for finding the area of the rhombus you have to multiply the two, two diagonal values length and then divide by two so half of d1 into d2 that means diagonal one multiply two diagonal values d1 into d2 divided by two which will be the area of the rhombus and next perimeter of the rhombus we already know that for a square the length all the sides will be same rhombus also all the sides will be same if you take one side as a then all the four sides will be a a a a so which we can write it as 4a so perimeter of a rhombus is 4a so coming to the third important formula side of a rhombus in order to find the value of a this is the basic formula for a rhombus for finding the value of a but you can simplify this formula and you can write the formula like this because d1 square we are separating these two value d1 square d2 square 2 square is 4 2 square is 4 taking outside 4 outside from the square root it becomes 1 by 2 so we have two formulas but listen carefully friends we can apply both the formula to find any one of the formula to find the sides of a rhombus but listen carefully in case in your exam if the value of d1 is given and the value of d2 is given so our target is to find what is the value of a first case let's example i'm saying which formula to be used at the right point right so if the value of d1 is given value of d2 is given our target is to find what is the value of a in this case try to apply the first formula why because if the value of d1 is 24 example i am saying if the value of d1 is 24 if you go with the second case so half of d1 24 square you have to find what is the value for 24 square so it is little bit difficult to find the answer for 24 square because it takes time if you are preparing for SSC, Railway or other exams, you have to be a little bit fast. So, at that case, what you can do is apply the value in this formula. 24 by 2, which is 12. 12 square is 144. Yes or no? So, I have written 144 easily here. But if I go with 24 square here, so 24 square, another number, which will be a lengthy process. It takes little bit of time more when compared to this formula. In case number 1. If both D value is given, in, in our target is to find what is the A value. If the question is like this, better go with the first formula. In case, if one D value has been given, but D2 value is not given, A value is given. In this case, do not go with the first formula, go with the second formula. So, apply D1 value, apply A value and find what is D2. Why? Because in this case, we will not make any mistake. Because we will take a square root to the left hand side, which will be easy. But if you come here, if you apply D1 value and if you apply A value for finding a D2, there might be a chance of making a mistake while finding LCM. So that's the reason I am saying if both the D value has been given, go with the first formula. If one D1 or a D2 or A value has been given, go always with the second formula. So it's completely your wish. If you go with any one of the formula, you are going to get the answer. But my suggestion is always going with this method. This will help you to save your time in the exam as well as the steps will be low and you won't make any mistake while taking LCM. So that's the reason I'm saying all these stuff, right? So friends, thank you so much for, I think enough, right? Just in a lesson one, we have learned the introduction about rhombus and basics about rhombus. From the next lesson, we can start solving a question and there I can tell you some of the other important properties while solving it so that you can able to understand it easily.
so friends thank you so much for watching this video and do not forget to purchase the book on the platform of feel free to learn because those books are definitely help you to clear the competitive exam recent years why because uh, nowadays the exam level are little bit high so only if you practice the difficult question you can able to clear the exam so do not forget to purchase the book on my channel right so friends thank you so much for watching this video bye